today I'm very glad to be here to um, show some of the games and comment for you. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me any time. Um, firstly, I would like to show you um, one of um, my very important games. Um, it was in uh, 2010, um, in the Aeroflot Open. This game I play white and my opponent is uh, Grandmaster Nepom Yechi from Russia. And uh, this is important because it's the critical last round. And um, at that point I was uh, leading by half a point um, ahead of two Grandmaster. Uh, Rus um, the Russian Grandmaster Nepom Yechi and uh, one Vietnamese friend. Uh, so I, I, uh, at that time I had six points out of eight games. And uh, this nine round is the last one, so uh, I have I had white, and um, okay if I work then I would take the clear first, and uh, if I draw then the situation is much more complex because uh, then I I could be tied for first, and I don't know uh, what the tiebreak would uh, favor whom, and one important thing is that the winner of the arrow flop open get the chance to play the super dark moon tournament. And that was that has been always my dream. So this is a very important moment for me to decide how to go in this game, to play aggressively or uh, play solidly and make a draw, maybe an easy draw. But uh, maybe it would not be enough to go for that one because it would be my biggest uh, chance and <coughs> also my hope to to take the clear first. And so I decided just to play a very normal game and uh, just to see what happened because if uh, for example if the other players do not score very well they do not win then i can make a draw and still take the first so i start with white and uh, i play x3 x6 c4 c5 we go for the symmetrical english opening My opponent playing two pieces is uh, not a very common move. Uh, usually, in this position, let's try to play pieces. Uh, Try to develop the bishop first, but okay. I suppose it's um, a try, a, a, an effort to try to surprise me in the opening. And so I just decide to play natural move, play b3, this is I play e4. Uh, okay, um, now it gets to. Um, common position from the Marozzi structure of the c student if that plays lovely like this is bishop e7, a6 and they will not play that then why of course try to play bishop e2, castle and okay, why has some space advantage um, but black is very solid of course but I think in general why plans is more easy it's easier to play and so my opponent Play more dynamically. He played bishop before. Okay, so now he's pinning this knight and threaten this pawn. So I have to defend bishop e3. <coughs> he played knight e5. Then why get some very very fast development because this shot itself is not very strong. It is limited by two four, and I would like to have some tempo by bishop e3 or bishop e4. So that response is very interesting. to play with this is okay. Um, he is attacking my bishop, and if this bishop go, I think. 
The problem is that if bishop e2, then he might straight on d1, take king on c3, and e4. And if bishop c2, just this ball. So my my move is almost more or less false, I think. I play bishop f4. Uh, this move is a uh, bone sacrifice, um, but well, in return for that, y has some very quick development. Um, and black has to decide which ball to take. Okay, now, okay, um, because black has to take on d3, if, if castle, then I will just play bishop e5, queen e5, f4, and white has the initiative after queen c7, white play e5 with the attack on the king side. So, in this case, black has to accept my sacrifice. Let's go back to Okay, I played bishop f4 and um, he took on c3. The problem is that uh, he, he would like to um, compromise my pawn structure first before taking on d3. If queen d3 now, then bishop e5, and um, after queen c4, then I play c1 and I have a very nice compensation with c5 and all my pieces are very active. And so I took on c3. C3, then the queen of the three, and to on E5. And now black has to decide which ball to take on E4 or on C4. In general, I don't think now black should a straight queen because. If um, queen d1, then I take with rook, in the rook, it's okay. And d4 is not hanging because c7 is not protected. And um, after that, okay, uh, why even maybe get some chances for initiative because black is underdeveloped and white bases are very active. So he decided to take the c4 pawn. Problem is that if taking with this pawn, then I will just satisfy one more, one more bomb with this rookie one, and um, I got a very strong attack for this, queen c4, and I will just play knight d4. And uh, that king, that king will feel very uncomfortable in the center, because uh, with that, is that square is strong. Um, this, this, this square is very, very weak, and it's uh, really hard to to defend against my threat. For example, now my threat is knight f5, and on this is and g7. And castle is never possible because after bishop take f6, g take f6, and white king will come to g4, check, in h8, and then queen h4. And it's almost a decisive attack because white, black has no place to defend the king. So this is probably <coughs> the risk for black to take on e4. He decided to take the c4 pawn, so, so at least in this way, uh, black keep the position uh, closer than, than if he take it on the c4, on the e4, uh, because now I don't have this uh, file. Okay, after, after queen c4, um, I play rook e1, I continue to develop. And now that has to decide um, which which side he wants to castle. The problem is that the uh, short castle is very very dangerous for that because um, as I say, after short castle, I will have to take take. And then I play queen g4, king h8 and queen h4. And uh, this is, I think, is already losing because um, this threat is axis and another threat is to rook on to the third rank and attack on the king side. And this is no defense because uh, 
this pieces are very passive and there's no effect against it. So shock is almost the same. So we have to try to apply for long castle. So a way to the only way to try to uh castle long is has to develop in this this side by playing pieces. Try to get it in Bishop B7 and Long Castle. Uh, okay, now I think we can stop for a while to have a evaluation about the position. Um, why is there a problem cost? <coughs> but um, all these pieces are very active, especially this bishop because it's controlled the very important square. This is M6 also, and uh, most important is uh, flat skin is very dangerous. Uh, it's uh, may come to an attack very early in the game, and now, and um, okay, I understand that the black has to cast along, and in that in that case, I would have to open my queen side. And one plan is try to play a4, a5, and also that I have to control this square because even in this this side, black can. This case is not very safe here because the bishop is only controlling this diagonal. Okay, so I first I develop this queen to f3. It's not really a threat to take here because okay, I, I'm showing you why. I play queen f3, you play bishop b7. Would rook b1 uh, be a good idea instead of queen f3? Rook b1? Yeah, rook b1, then I think, um, rook b1, okay, so you want knight a5 after bishop b7? Yes. Yes, but, uh, okay, I can just play bishop a6, I think this might be also fine to put the bishop here. And there's no, no real threat at the time, because now queen f3, I couldn't play but queen d3. To a strain uh, queen. I think, yes, so I think queen f3 was uh, a better try. It's okay, immediately I threatened to take on axis, but if he keep develop easy, uh, naturally bishop b7, okay, in the game he did, he played bishop b7, and um, now I see that bishop f6 is not very good for what? Because take, take, okay, I can regain the four cost with f6. Material is balanced. Uh, but now, rook g8, now his, his bishop is also very strong. In the long run, I think it can even be stronger than my knight. Um, because um, f game is, um, is okay in the stage now. And also in my team side, maybe they can come and attack soon, and so we can play rook c8 and c3. Okay, of course, here yeah, I have some uh, better <coughs> operate play, starting with 94. I calculated this in the game, and I realized uh, black has this move with c5, because um, black is not able to castle now, and black has to deal with the threat. The threat is now uh, 95. It's a very serious threat. And if black cannot take because EF and king is mated, <coughs> and uh, if not, then this threat is very hard to meet. So queen c5 is on the only move. And now 95. And uh, why just this, this move is, uh, this idea is to prevent g 5 and just to control this important square and the threat is just for really one because black is not able to take this knight but now black has a very important move uh, first I, I thought about root g6 but root g6 and after root g6 I have queen h8 queen f8 check uh, queen f8 and g6 check g7 Form. Of course, if I can uh, win here, then rook f8, knight b7, then rook b8, and knight e and uh, in this position, in that position, that cannot be worse. So
So part of the good form is now is stronger than Bishop because it's controlled everything and uh, it's uh, positionally better for white. But um, the problem is that that has a, a better move than Eclipse than Let me take four. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yes, Professor is very strong. And after King G2, we have five. And we get a very unclear position. It's very hard to evaluate in the game because I, I think that um, Black has very good compensation for the exchange. If we get five, we have, and it's not a clear that why it's better. In some position, I think maybe Black has the initiative. So in the game, I don't think this is a good good life for me. So this rook g2 is the key move for uh, the we can say the refutation of uh, the line of f6. to this king and um, prepare for some attack in the future if possible. And so now that castle. Okay, positionally I never want to exchange this bishop for knight because even I regain a pawn but after she take queen f6, then black knight rook g8 and um, I think black has some very nice perfect play. Mm, uh, bishop in the long run can be even better than knight. So I would prefer to keep this bishop until a good moment. <coughs> maybe if uh, then if necessary, then, then I would like to exchange. But first, of course, I would like to uh, attack, try to attack the king at my a4. Maybe black is very simple. Just to open the big side and get the file for my rook to attack the king. And so he played queen c5 now. And this is it's not possible because now I think now I can take this pawn. Uh, I can take this knight and g take and queen take this. And uh, this is a good good uh, target. And also the a5 came very fast and it's um, a better position for white. So he played queen c5. Very good. I think a very good move because it kick the bishop away of e5 and uh, I have to decide whether to go back to g3 now or take on f6 and uh, as I said I did not like to take on f6 because after g10 rook g8 always has some kind of line on the king side with g5 a string queen and take it and uh, threaten to g2 so I think I still have some conversation here so I did not want to exchange this now just go back to g3 and uh, now that has to, to, to um, deal with this problem in the queen side because in, in some lines I can even put my queen on f4 to threaten mate on the diagonal. That's for example if we play d5. That's why d5 is not possible because that's queen f4 just uh, here and it's almost no defense again that queen b8. Queen c7. So uh, this is very important for black to close this diagonal and this this uh, response is understandable. Close my bishop. Uh, okay, I um, realize that this is not a real threat because once he take on d4, he open again the diagonal for me and also for the c5. So I do not really need to move my knight. It's just a loss of time. So I just a5. Uh, of course, here taking the knight is not possible. It's um, very dangerous for the black king. I would say, well, it's probably green, but take, take. And uh, I 
if you dilute that here. Maybe give a check first. Okay, that's it. Okay, check. It should see this. I think this is. And it's, uh, I think it's losing for black because could be this compounds for root B1 and <coughs> might on B8. And if I get this, is, then just root A7, root C7, and with that uh, thread, then I don't think they can uh, and deal with this thread, this uh, deadly thread, I think. So uh, he, he must not took the 9. He cannot take the 9. He, Okay, here I think um, the best move for black is like this is because uh, he, he need to protect this pawn um, and also get down close my, my diagonal is very important but after even after this is I think why is still better after let's say eight species eight species and I five. For sure, the compensation for one point is more than enough. And, um, but I think that can still defend. I did not go in much into much deeper in this line. And uh, of course, the, the import of course, they can try to close the the queen side by playing b5, not allowing me to uh, open the a5, but then I, I can play this and this. Bishop c6, and then knight b3. Then I can move a9, and queen has to go to this, to defend this, and then I play the a5. Okay, um, in the long run, I think white will assist to open the queen side by playing c4, rook b1, rook b1, and attacking on this. So this is also bad for black. And uh, but my, my opponent's move in the game is also very interesting. It leads to a position that is quite complicated. He played, uh, played rook e8. This idea is also to defend his pawn and um, activate his pieces if necessary for the future. And now I now I, I see that my my idea have to play ninety five, but um, I decided to open the a five first. This advantage of this exchange is I I show you a few moves later because. After this, this, the uh, f5. Uh, now, the, the next following move are more less fast. Now I'm at g7, and uh, it's hard to defend this. It, he has to play this g6 anyway. Because now e4 is not possible, I just take with the rook, with to e4. Um, yes. And this is if knight e4, rook e4, if he plays g6, with the idea that if knight goes somewhere in f5, then uh, he the rook back. But now I have this move, rook c4. And after bishop f3, rook c5, b take, knight e6, knight e8, and I took a pieces. So that's the idea why he cannot take an e4 first, but he had to play g6 first. And after he played g6, I have to go this, move knight g7. Um, because if, if knight go back somewhere, h6 or h4 or somewhere, then knight e4 and f5. And black is very far, maybe even better. So I think knight g7 is more or less false. 
فانا رايد الفاق الناي الى فاق الروت and let us do far away because if for example if root j had they just could have cis and now it's right and the now it's sharp here but before it's getting sharp and we take some opponent also they attack and so on so he found a very interesting response in 94 okay I have to take the root 98 and now you can see the, uh, the advantage of opening the A5 um, with this spot here uh, on A7 and A, uh, A5. Now I can take on G3 because uh, with this spot there, after G3, with this hanging, so I have to take on G3 and play take with the root back to E8 and he has bishop and two points for the chain and that must be verified in that position. But here in IG3 is not possible because surely A8 can get his way. We should take and queen A8 and his mate. So that's why one has to um, exchange uh, the A pawn first before playing this in A5 in IG7. So we uh, down IG3. Uh, that has to take with root on e8. Um, so, this is also almost possible for me. I have to take this point. Because root e4 is also not possible because f5. And I have nothing for this. So, I have to play with f7. Root f8. Back to A2 to defend F2. <coughs> so uh, the dynamic play has been almost over, and we can have another evaluation now. And uh, why is an exchange up for one pawn? And uh, why is King looks more? safer than the next king, especially with queens on the bottom. So next first way to exchange queen if the queen is this. The idea is to threaten mate on g2. The easiest threat is now c3 attacking queen and g2 at the same time. So my response is also almost fast, f3, and they follow a series of exchange uh, we see 5 G. I have to play bishop f2. Okay, if king h1, then uh, s g3, h3 g3, g4, and y has to take the draw. Because uh, if now f4, then rook f5 and come to h5. Y may be even losing. And if f take e4, then queen h5 check, king g1, and queen back to c5. It's a perpetual check. So uh, I, I cannot play this. King h1. So I play bishop f2. Uh, back to on f2. Queen f2. Okay, uh, now we are in an end game where Y has two groups and on and black has group and bishop and one board for that. Okay, group e three is also false. King c seven. King g three. E takes g takes. I don't think it's an easy win for Y. Uh, after the game, I analyzed with my computer this game, and 
on the computer always show a big scarf. Why? This, um, I don't think it's that easy to win because, okay, uh, why I have only four points left and it's very separated. Uh, it's easy to be calm and tuck it and, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, why I only have four, uh, three points left, black is four, and uh, this, I think why need to have a uh, good plan here. Uh, I think this in game is very interesting because if I just play normally, just making some, some move around like computer suggests, then I don't see it's uh, really progress for white. For example, uh, what's black, what is black plan? You want to put the bishop on f5. Because in this square, the bishop protects very important spot and and Rook can go to try to touch a play on c3 or try to, to attack this ball if uh, I advance this to, to far away. And um, the problem is that if in, in this type of position, uh, it's not easy to win because uh, we will see it's very hard for one to create a passport. In this king side, back is two ball, back is two ball. And um, I can defend this pawn very easy with this bishop. Like I said, bishop on f5 and this pawn if necessary to h5. So everything protects each other. And uh, in this flank, if I extract more pawn, then it will be, the, the material will be very reduced. And it's very, very hard to win. Also, in this, in this side, and, um, this bishop can also protect this pawn. And this one, can be protected by king and his rook. So, I, I did not say that uh, it's very easy for white to win because uh, there's, I, I really did a good plan. And here, during the game, I, I think I found a good plan, a very interesting one. Uh, first, if I want to win, then you see at, at, the, at the suitable moment, you will have to satisfy your rook back to, uh, for the bishop. For the bishop and one point. And that was happen in the king side because in the queen side if you satisfy for the rook for the, the bishop and one pawn then he still have one and you have one so there's no advantage there and but in this side if you satisfy the rook for for a bishop and a pawn then you may create a passport in this flank and um, well that, that means it come down to rook and games and Rook and games is never win as according to Dr. Taras, as we already know. Uh, but uh, I think it is my best chance because um, practically it's pretty easy to defend this this witness for black. And so the first one is I I have to decide which pawn that I would like to satisfy. For example, I, I saw that um, this witness is too far from my king to counter attack. So this one is closer, and in order to make it um, win this, I have to force this guy to h5. So the first move is that we do h4. Um, um, was the black to move for? It's uh, sorry. white to move because black is just black in c7. Oh, in c7. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I play rook h4. Uh, okay, black plays very logical. You should be five. The plan I, I just explained if one put bishop on f5 just to defend on the weak pawn. So I continue. Especially in, in this uh, kind of position, if I manage to exchange rook, it's not that easy to say if it's benefit for me. Because it, in some case, for example, if now I go rook f5, I don't think we are straight, it will just go to rook a8. But the problem is that um, oh yeah. uh, so I'm missing some move because I think it's flat to move now. I think it's flat to move, yeah, you're, you're right, yes. Because uh, after, I, I'm sorry, because 
After root E3, take 1967, PG3, D take F3, D take F3, should be black to move, yes, if like, uh, okay, so I can delete my plan to pay for the plan to show this. Is. Okay, and um, so this shall come to here to defend this first rule, and I have to go this group H4. First, I try to provoke this, this pawn to advance um, further, and then I, I will try to attack this pawn. Okay, H5 is very logical. I play group F4. Now exchanging group for blood is not very good because uh, this pawn has no, no, not enough time to uh, to create a pass pawn and I will just go here, go to g5. Of course, bishop to f5 is very this, but then I will go somehow and take with this, yeah. So, but can you not play the rook to f7 instead of playing the pawn to h5? Yeah, it's possible, but uh, the passage. Yes, I see, but uh, the problem is that rook is a bit passive on f7 mm -hmm. because uh, after rook f7, then I, I will go back to f4 and he cannot play rook a8 line it again. Um, that's why if you want to keep the, this rook on the <coughs> 8th rank. And uh, okay, we can, uh, that's just my, my plan. And I cannot say that uh, for sure that this pawn is weaker than on h7. But, uh, okay, because he thinks bishop f5 is almost very safe for black. I play rook f4, he play rook a8. I play h4, because you see, if I, if I leave my king to attack this pawn, then in some cases, uh, black can activate this rook to the a1 or a2, and then to g1 to Disturb my king here, or should try to create some country play on the h2 pawn and the c3 pawn. So it's not a very easy task because I need some piece, for example, my rook here to protect this guy. And um, so this is, I, I have to first advance this h4 because if I, I go this too early, then bishop f5 is okay for black because now h4, then he can play rook a4 and cut my king along the far rank. And, I cannot see any real progress for one. So first I play h4. I have to piece this ball in this, this square. Okay, he play um, rook a5. I play rook f6. He play bishop f5. I play king f4. So I I accomplished my first goal is to put my king close to this pawn in order to wait for a good time to satisfy back my strength. Um, the rook cannot cut my king because um, now if bishop move to c2 or b1 in order to cut this, then I have this rook e2 and cut the bishop. And this real problem is that they cannot go to b1 because of rook b2 and b6 is hanging. So anyway, if bishop b3, then rook b2, and he has to go back to f5 anyway. So, so he, he did not go bishop c2, he played rook c5. And my king counters g5, he played bishop c2 check, I played king h6. Okay, now it can become a real threat of satisfied on this. Because after satisfied here, I have the free, the, the bus pawn, the pass f pawn, and um, well, it's, it's a uh, group a game and uh, it's equal pawn, but um, my pawn can be much faster than this pawn. Because it, this pawn is not, is not fast at the moment, and it has to uh, lose some time to create the bus pawn on the queen side. Uh, first, he play c4. Attack this pawn. Okay, I have to play f4. Also protect this this pawn and also try to get my my pawn uh, most as bad as possible. So just to prepare for the future if I I want to satisfy. And um, my opponent understand that very well and he play he also play for his own passport 
because he understand if he just wait for example with the king or with the rook c5 c4 then it will be some time that I can satisfy here. Maybe I can protect it first with group f3 somehow. Okay, we have one play b5. And so now I can I, I still not cannot uh, take on g6 because after that f4 is hanging. And okay, if I take the for example rook c6, bishop g6, king g6, group f4, king h5, then b4. And he extract the the bone there, and in the long run, this bone um, when he go to h7, rook will be satisfied by this bone, and then this bone will be advanced, and my rook has to satisfy it back, and then it's a draw. Of course, with um, that, that's the idea. Because um, if I if I satisfy my rook for bishop and pawn, then I must be sure that my pawn will be fast, much faster than his pawn. And uh, at this moment, it's not that sure. So. So I play this rook e5 because uh, now I, I offer an exchange for this pawn for this pawn. Uh, the problem is that the b5 pawn is more advanced than the d7 pawn. So if he take this one, I take this one, and then later I can simplify here because my pawn is more advanced and also my my rook cut along the fifth rank, and um, it's it's not so easy for this guy to to make a to make this pawn uh, go ahead and also I have two pawn and can advance pretty easily so I play rook e5 of course he did not take this he played rook c6 now we offer an exchange of rook but in this case uh, it would not be favorable for me because if I exchange then we connect it to pawn with the c6 and um, in this side, I will not make a fast pawn unless I have to satisfy the rook for for this pawn. Because after this, this you can see that uh, with that satisfied on Jesus, my pawn is going away. The shop shown everything. Pawn protected themselves. So uh, and if rook g five, then. Then I think uh, that has enough time to to play this. If this is <coughs> this is check. Otherwise, it's no nobody else to make progress for what they think. This is and uh, black has to play this in d seven in order to control the square before the, the pawn. So if f5 now can back to f8 and this pawn will go ahead. And if king g7, then king is this and this is a draw. Because I, I can I have no time to advance my uh, my pawn. Because it, it will take too long if I if I take this pawn then come back, then this pawn can also go very fast and and I think um well, it's not good anyway with this king h5, c5, king g4, b4, maybe let's see even faster. So, it's not a good time to exchange rook. So, uh, that is almost forced to exchange one pair of pawns. The problem is that he has to decide which pawn he, he wants to give. Um, of course, he wants to give this pawn because it's less expensive than this guy. If let's take on c3 and I say rook b5, then I will try to satisfy here and I can be faster. So, black decided to go to d6. So I took on d7. It took on c3.
Okay, uh, at this moment, if I give a check on this is, oh, this is, you just go back to this is and the straight, offer the stretch of proof. And what this structure is, we will not, it will never be winning for one because let me throw the things I already had this before this pass. So, here, black root the eight. But actually, uh, right after <coughs> playing that, I realized I have a better move. And that is pretty fine. Yeah. Because um, group D5 force black to play group B3 to defend this because B4 is not possible because of group B5 change. So group D3, now I can go group D6 change, C9 5, and it's a good time to satisfy for this. It's the only way for white, it's why one to play for win. There's no, no way other than satisfy the group for the bishop and pawn to get my own free pawn. Uh, the, the problem is um, is that you have to calculate it correctly this angle. It's not that easy to emphasize to, to think about it. Okay, let has a free pawn, uh, a pass pawn as well, and he try to, to advance it as fast as possible. King A4, I will show you just a brief line because it's uh, almost a pawn race and uh, who, uh, almost uh, every tempo counts so who will be faster will win this end game and I would say it looks like why it's faster but uh, it's not as simple as here that is to give a check on G3 because um, he, would, he need to make a good use of the fact that one cannot play rook g5 after playing f1, f5. So this is a good time to give a check here because if you play b4, then I play f6. And when you give a check somewhere, then I only have rook g5 or rook f5. So it's a, let's try to win time with rook g3 and h5. b4. This No, I am sure. Uh, before it's not the best way to play. After rook g3, pin h5, play has to play this, rook f3. It's very important because it's important because it keeps the, the white king closer to, to this promoted square. Uh, it, uh, because otherwise, why, why wins the tempo by then exits with the threat of rook f5, pg6, rook g5. So, after rook f3, why play pg6? And that has to make a good use of rook g3, because still there is no rook g5. And here, why has to go this? And uh, this, this is just my analysis. G7, Rg3, Kf8, one has to go this, and then after that, B4, Fs. It's, it's not that easy to calculate because uh, after you cannot be sure that this position is winning for what. After B3, I, I thought during my calculation, I thought it was a pro, but then I found, I mean, after the game, I found. Um, a very important move here, that is Rook E4 check. Uh, this is a very important intermediate move because um, it wins a tempo. In, in this kind of position, it wins a tempo because I, I will just show you um, why it's pretty complicated. Because it, um, everybody can see that um, this Rook will sooner or later satisfy for this form. And so my only chance is for to to uh, pass ball here. And okay, I will just give you an example. If, for example, I already satisfied here, so the king is here. And uh, so let's say if my pawn is here. So what important is that uh, in this kind of position, if it's uh, white to move, then white win. But if it's black to move, then it's a problem. Because if black to move, that will just 
Like look at history, and whenever I make him leave F8, then he just give a check. And H7, then just look at three back, and just just like that, just like that. H7, just look at three. Even if I go somewhere here, he just go this, 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 like this, and just when I leave then, and then he come back again. So it could be a draw, but if why to move in this position? He play H5 and it's a win for one. Because now the, this one is very close to the promoted square and if black plays to H3 and white has a very tricky trick, that is like H6 and if H6 then G7. Yes. And if let just skip this, for example if H doesn't play to H3, then why just play H6? For example if that move is getting close, but it doesn't matter much because the king is too So, after h6, for example, if black like, okay, rook h3, rook h3, h6, let's say, king c2, something like that. And then I can come my king out here, rook e8, and this win because check, and came here, and now if uh, actually, I think I should. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, I mean, I should come here. Can be seven to check, and I came back here. And now if we have back and I have H seven, and so this two ball will one will quit, <coughs> and of course it's winning for one. That's why I, I say um, every table counts in this kind of position, and it's important to. To make this uh, rook in fortune, because this win a very important thing for white. This position, rook in four. Uh, the problem for black is that black cannot go to the b5. If king b5, then white or white has yet, yet. Also, maybe it's not so necessary because now the king is far away from the pawn. It will take some more time. Kid a3 is not possible now because now I play f7. B2, and I have king e8. My queen, uh, my pawn became queen later, but we check, and that wins for my first with the uh, group and queen give checks. Uh, group f3, just group e1, and my pawn with queen, and after that, after that all is strange, I have one more pawn, and so that wins for my. So, after Rook A4, Rook A4 check. Black is fast to go back to A5. And now I play H5. And now B2, and one can go back here. And that's exactly what I, I explained to you. After this, and Rook B1 satisfy on here, and this one comes to H6, and this is a win. So that's why why did that very important tempo to advance this ball to H5. Uh, just let's get get back to the game and don't go too far. So I did not realize all this during the game and I played rook e8 because uh, this also quite complicated, especially in uh, this time control. Um, you could not ensure the game like this. Uh, it's very good and messy, uh, and it's it's um, I think it's over move forty. Uh, we got some extra time, but for, for this uh, this position, it's also quite complicated for for us, for women. So I don't think it's um, that easy to calculate during the game. I did not see group D5. Actually, I saw it, but uh, I could not uh, calculate all the consequences after group D6 and group D6, and I was not sure about that in game. So, I just make a group D8. Just try to control from behind the pawn. 
and keep playing in the fun where they should go. And yes, and here I play group A. Also, it's a very interesting possibility to uh, play this this move group A8. Uh, after King B4, group B8. That is forced to play Bishop B3 because group C5 is not possible because after a string one has group C8 and fork the bishop. So bishop B3 is the only move, and now it's very very important to play this move f because you can see that uh, the bishop is now protecting both the the pawn and is kind of uh, overlapping. So if you try to to make this f5 work. Okay, here I has to take with the pawn because if bishop take f5, then it's again rook take b5, <coughs> king c4, and then satisfy on f5. And then um, take, take, and this, this position is not for black because the black king is cut, is cut off along the fifth rank. If, for example, if black king is clear, this is clear draw, of course. Even if it's clear, I think it's a draw. So even if not, if not cut here, even it's just here or here, it's draw. But with the king is here, that is a loss because uh, I would just take this pawn and advance my own pawn, and black king is can never get into the corner square. So this endgame is lost. And uh, I think black take with the f. With the g-pawn on f5, if she takes, if she takes f5, then can take h5, and. Uh, And now I, I get my own passport on the H5, finally I could create one. Um, the problem is that in the game I thought plus C5 would hold for black, but actually uh, it's, it's not that easy because after I change the exchange of group. You know, uh, theoretically if, let's say, if let's be can come back to f7 and y take all this pawn. It's not an easy win because uh, theoretically, if y pawn is on h4, from h2 to h4 is a uh, win. But if y pawn came to h5, it's a draw. It's a, it's a pretty complicated matter because uh, black king will just remain in the corner. And there's no way to get it down. For example, if you just if the pawn is just pushing here, then it's a draw because he will just stay here. If you check him, he he goes to f7, and this king will never break away. And this this uh, promoted square. If you go f6, this bishop will just stay in this diagonal, and there's no no win. But with this pawn h4, there's some there's there's a way to win. Okay. Uh, it's pretty long to to to, uh, to show the that way here to show the line here because it's a long maneuver. But uh, I, I said I mean uh, in the game I, I think after the strand of strand of root then I think my my pawn will try to promote. So I think uh, G five and I try to push it to h7 but then even then I, I think they can satisfy this pack at the right moment f4 and bring this king back here so if then my pawn cross h5 is a draw and also very important is that black can also try some something like bishop e2 just to satisfy for the pawn and try to advance this pawn for <coughs> and uh, I think it's not that clear, but um, a long 
analysis show that it could be a still win for Y. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, Y has to play very, very, very accurately to have to win. And, um, okay, in the game, I choose another line. There's also one good reason for this because at this moment um, uh, the players who was uh, half a point behind me make a draw and so I just need to make a draw in this game and my opponent uh, was half a point behind me he was but he wants to fight for, for the first prize he wants to uh, take the play first because if he beats me then he would be the play first so at this moment I play this group A in I played rook b8 actually, he played rook b3, I played rook c8, he played bishop b3, he played bishop b1, uh, I played rook b8 back, and I offer him draw. But, uh, well, what can you do? Because uh, when you have a better position and you 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 know that if you make a draw, you will take this play first, then I allow myself to stop the game. But uh, my opponent did not want so, so he declined my draw offer and he uh, wanted to continue the game. So, okay, so, uh, what did I play? I play to be a 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 to So, I was not sure why he declined my offer because it's obvious that that is not going to win this game. And okay, of course he maybe he tried to uh, try to use the best of his chance because okay everyone wants to go to the Dark Moon Super Tournament. So okay, uh, he played King A4, so I played Rook B6. Now he played rook b4, he attacked my pawn. But I think it's a mistake because, um, especially with this this king a4 and rook b4, because it's clear that this pawn will not go to advance very very soon. And uh, it's only why he tried to find for win here. So he played rook b4, I give a check on this. this. He played king b3. Okay, I satisfy this. I think it's a good time for this. Because in general, Y's position is still much better. And if someone is faster and this pawn rise, it must be, it must be white. And okay, if, if I wonder at any moment, it must be possible. Okay, he took the GCs. In GCs. I, I would say uh, evaluation for this position is Maybe we need for one. Uh, Black didn't offer, offer, a, offer a draw and you uh, <laughs> Some move later he did, but... Uh, <laughs> well, at that moment I was sure, so... Okay. Um, he, he took on F4. But I think that was his last mistake because it leads to a technical problem, uh, a technical win for one. Uh, the most on defense, I think, is in a four, and he has to, to to defend this guy and also make ways for the pawn to advance. And um, the problem is uh, why now why lose the uh, one tempo because <coughs> why cannot play f5 because after f5 from the h4 after after f5 from the h4 f6. Rook g4 check, rook g5, rook f4, for example rook f5, then rook g4, and 
can go somewhere. And we came back to uh, we came back to the end and we have this spot as cannot be winning for why because uh, it, we are straight it will give this group for my board and later I will have to give my group for this one also. So it will be a group. So in that case I would have to spend one tempo for this move in G5 to defend this, defend this, and now I'm threatening to play F5. Uh, but then that group B1, then F5, that is more or less similar to, to what I I showed you before in the line group B5 and uh, group C6, group C6. But now it's a uh, tempo up from that compared to that line. Because now, okay, now I take here, send it, give here, give here. Rook one, king h6. Rook f1, king g7, rook f1, king f8. Before? Before. F6. It's one triple up because the rook is now in a better place in g1, not in g3. So, uh, I don't know if, if it's winning. But it, it looks like so because before, who's, who's done to move? Before F6, D3, Rook E2, they have to play this, Rook E2, oh, Rook E4 first, yeah, oh, they Rook E4 first, and then uh, King A5 is must because King A3, as I say, F7, B2, King A8 is Rook for 1 so, oh, maybe not that, no, no. oh, yes, yes, it's, it's, it's right. Because so King A5, I play F, F, I have to play B2. And now I think Rook H1 will draw for that. Because, um, well, this this guy is not a bad hand fine enough for this. If it's on H5, then, then this could be winning. This F7. That's okay. It's, uh, it's, it's too far away to our game and I and he took an F4 and well, I mean just keep me for keep my practical chance for uh, for black. It might be pro, but uh, my, my opponent at this moment maybe he he saw that the position is an easy draw. Uh, let's see. Let's see, yeah. So he took on F4. Oh, I'm sorry, that is a ball here. So after rook F4, I think it's the technical winning for Y. After rook B5 shape, gives you 4. I rook H5. Yes, because the king is <coughs> yes, uh, it's, exactly yes. Um, so we just play some more move and we just quickly show you because it's pretty easy for for me now. Rook five, rook h eight, h five. Nothing can come back, but it's probably too late because after this, king six, king six, king seven. Making have uh, take the take the. For the most important square in front of the bottom <coughs> square, so H6, G7, G6, and after this, he resigned. And so I won the tournament with uh, 7 points of night, and so my dream has come true. I came to Dublin to play with the big ass of the world, and so yeah, it's a very important game for my career. Mm -hmm. so it's the first time that I won the Aeroflot in 2010. So, okay, so thank you for following the game with me.